The roots of the Animal Liberation Front lie here in Hunt Sabotage. For many dedicated activists, being a saboteur gives the first taste of law-breaking. In the, uh, in the early 60s, this was considered such a radical move, trespassing. It, it played such a, a revolutionary move, really, in the animal rights movement. It made us sit up and take account of what we're doing. We've got to take direct action. It's no good waiting for anyone else to do it. I'm here today, but I'm not going to depend on these other people. I'm here today for myself. I'm going to actually take part in saving animals' lives. They can't leave it! Who's touching him? Who's touching him? They can't leave it! Leave it! John Curtin says he's a former Animal Liberation Front activist. He served two years in prison for offences which included raiding a laboratory, desecrating a huntsman's grave, and threatening a fur shop owner. He's totally unrepentant. He refuses to accept that arson is a serious crime and believes that the growing ALF incendiary campaign is not only justified, but is also non-violent. It's a, a non-violent piece of direct action. The, the devices you're talking about, they're built into a little cigarette pack. They're designed to go off at night to produce some smoke, to set the sprinkler systems off. They're not designed to burn down stores at all. The only stores that have been burned down, Debenhams in Luton, Dickens and Jones in Milton Keynes, Dingles in Plymouth, they had faulty sprinkler systems. You can imagine if they had a fire in the middle of the day, they didn't have sprinkler systems. The stores burnt to the ground, but you say that's non-violent. No, they weren't designed to burn to the ground. The fact is, the, the, the activists intended for some smoke bombs to go off. The result was the stores were burnt down. Now, that could have ended a loss of life. But that wasn't planned. You'd presume that a place like... Uh, but you're a company like well House planned. of Fraser, the House of Fraser, you, you would have to presume, really, that they have a safe sprinkler system, wouldn't you? What? How but, can you but it's a crime that, that these, these stores haven't. The belief that it's right to plant incendiaries as long as people are not harmed is fundamental to the ALF. In an attack at Christmas, firebombs were placed in eight stores around the country. Three in London, in Howells of Cardiff, Manchester's Kendall Milne, Rackham's in Birmingham, Liverpool's Lewis's and Dingle's in Plymouth. The campaign caused millions of pounds worth of damage. That would have been planned to absolutely, totally minimise any risk to human, to human beings, to firemen. Firemen, their instructions are to not risk their lives when it comes to uh, protecting property. No lives are at risk protecting property, but I think they had some information that there might have been some security guards on site. And there wasn't, because it would have been planned in such a way that there were no people anywhere near. And that is the animal liberation from non-violent direct action. The floor of the University Senate House was destroyed and £100,000 worth of damage was caused. Well, the people who actually done that, who, who actually planted the bomb or whatever, they must have looked into it work, and they must have felt that it was the right thing to do, to actually threaten him, to scare him, to, to jolt him out of his, you know, of his way of thinking. Many scientists have given up their work through being threatened. What would you say the, to... The, uh, the Fur Review, the, the Fur magazine, that's recently stopped publishing because they received a letter bomb, not primed to go off on it, but just the basic threat of it. But we're not dealing with it, it's not a game of cricket, we're not, you know, it's not like a stamp collector and everything like that. There's millions of animals dying every day. You know, it really is a, such a serious issue. This recent rock video shows a laboratory raid. Sympathy for ALF violence is growing throughout today's youth culture and Morrissey is one of Britain's most influential rock stars. Do you think that your video was endorsing law breaking? Well, um if there wasn't a law against it, it wouldn't be law-breaking. I find the law on these matters so, um, so fascist and silly that I can't really take it seriously anyway. So to me, it's not like breaking the law. Twenty years ago, the battle for animal rights was fought with bugles and horns. Today, the weapons are high explosives, guns, and firebombs. The damage now runs into millions of pounds, and attacks grow more violent with each month. And no one knows where it will all end. When people have gone out, they've broke the law, it's got the headlines, it's got people talking, we've got millions of vegetarians in the country now, the fur trade's on its last legs. We've had, like, the women's liberation movement at the time, black liberation came to the forefront, animal liberation, our time has come now. 
You did yeah. not create your whip. You swung it at my girlfriend. Come on, get out. Get Start hitting people. We put the yeah, cameras in. my daughter. Well, don't Great send her in front then. No, you'd have more otters to kill, wouldn't you? And poke down and bloody be cruel too. People like you, you just, you make me so sick. Animal rights. 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 Animal r